If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, February 19th, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. The SEC Championships began yesterday in Athens, Georgia with the coveted team titles on the line. On yesterday's show, I previewed the women's portion of the meet with Olympic champion Rowdy Gaines, and it's my great pleasure to have Rowdy back with me today in the Phoenix Monitor to talk about the men's meet. Rowdy, good to see you as always. How are you? Thanks, Jeff. Good to be with you again. Well, we talked about everything that was going to go on in yesterday, yesterday's show in the women's meet. A lot of close battles between Georgia, Texas A&M, maybe even Florida in the mix. But I think it's going to be a little bit different on the men's meet. I think Florida's pretty much got this locked up. Do you agree? Unbelievable. I mean, I, I look at domination, and you have to go back to some of the Auburn days when they won like 50 years in a row. Uh, this is going to be complete domination, I think, by Florida. They are amazing. And sort of like Georgia in the women, but much more um, powerful is the fact that they just don't have any weaknesses. None. Zero. Every stroke, every event, uh, everything from, you know, DeBoard in the 50s. Um, he's like who can swim anything and everything, including relays. Um, Elliot in the breast. Uh, Rousseau and, and Wallace and DiRigio in, in, the, in the middle distance in the IMs, they're, they're just loaded, Jeff. There's just no weaknesses whatsoever. So, um, yeah, I, I, I expect them to run away with this meet. Yeah, I was going down every event, and I couldn't find one event yeah. where you won't see a Gator nope. in the top three. And, and it could be the first time, well, I mean, certainly they're going to do it at SECs, but it could be, I don't know about the first time, but I, I think you're going to see a, a, an opportunity for them to score in every single event um, uh, at the NCAAs as well. If there's one minor picky thing I'm picking at, it might be their backstroke a little bit. But, they, you know, I still think they're going to be very strong in that and, and good enough to get, a, a, you know, get the relays going and, 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 and they'll be fine. So I think they're, they're my pick to win it all, not only at SECs, but at the NCAAs. I know there's a lot of Michigan uh, fans and Cal fans and Texas fans that will definitely beg to differ. And, and believe me, I think it's going to be very, very close. But I think they've got the, all the tools this year to win it all. Oh. Yeah, Florida is definitely meet after meet after meet this season. Yeah. They've just been showing how impressive they are, just just killing everybody in dual yeah. meets. I mean, I mean, I saw the Auburn dual meet uh, a few weeks ago, and they just, they just, it was just unbelievable. It, it was just like event after event. It was just complete domination. And Auburn's good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not like they they stink. This is a good team they beat. So, uh, I think uh, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. To Love to watch fast swimming, and uh, Greg Troy, you know, again, a year after year, does such a good job with the Gators. It's, it's hard, as you mentioned, a lot of swimmers on Florida's team that are going to do great, and it's hard to single out one, but one guy I've been having my eye on this entire season is Andrea Dargo, the, the freshman. Um, since the first meet, he has just been a big contributor in the freestyle events. Just every meet, he's doing so well. And what, I, what, I, what is making me single him out is this is his first season swimming short course yard. So we really don't know what he's capable of doing. We've never seen him do a shave and taper meet short course yard. So that's got to make it exciting for Greg Troy to know that, okay, he's about to rest this kid and, you know, the sky is really the limit. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And the fact that you, you don't know... I mean, everybody else just doesn't know what's going to happen with him. I think we know just watching the results so far. I mean, you know what you're going to get out of Seaslack. You know what you're going to get out of Rousseau and DeBoard and Elliott. But he's four or five of those guys, Dara goes. I mean, he's, there's four or five of those guys that have come aboard here this year that can really make an impact at the end. And so, yeah, and he can swim anything from the 100 to the mile. So it, it, it's going to be very interesting. And like you said, Jeff, a lot of fun to watch. And I was, I really did want to go back to the weakness that you mentioned with Florida. It is kind of, is their backstroker, but right. I mean, they, they really have been doing pretty well. I mean, Connor Signorin in the 200, he's really been kind of 
holding his own there. I mean, if there's if if there is a weakness, if they're going to be trying to contend not just at SECs but NCAA's and those sprint medley relays, it's going to yeah. they're going to really have to have a good backstroker because pe- people like Cal, Arizona, yeah. they have good backstrokers that are really going to help them get out front. And, you know, it's not it's not easy, and especially in a two hundred medley relay, to come from behind. You're you're right about that. The, the only the only thing I, I, I say that I take exception to is I saw Michigan kind of do it last year, and they didn't. I, I can't remember what stroke it was, but one of the strokes they they weren't strong, and and they were they consistently got in the top eight. I think for for Florida they've got three back legs on those medley relays that uh, the the three behind the backstroke that are so strong that will propel them into the finals, and that's the thing you need to do. You need to get into that top eight on each and every one of those relays. It's not necessarily you have to win them, but you really have to to find a way to get into the finals in almost every relay if you're going to win the NCAAs. And I think they have that chance. You're right about the backstroke. Maybe a little weak, but uh, I think the back uh, the 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 back three legs will find a way to get them in there. Well, I know as an Auburn alum, it pains you to talk so much about <laughs> Florida. So let's talk about Auburn a little bit here. You know, they, they after, like I think it was 16 straight conference titles in a row for the men, and then Florida won last year. It, it really is going to be hard for them to win this year. And I think also they've got to keep their eye out on Georgia. They're going to be sneaking up there, putting up some great stuff. Um, do you think Auburn can hold off Georgia for a second? I, I, I do, only because, again, um, and I keep hating, a, uh, I hate uh, beating a dead horse here, Jeff. But it, again, it's it's the relays and those sprint relays. Auburn will be very, very good, and they're led by the best sprinter in the country, without a doubt. And that's Chirgini, who's he, he's number one country now in the 50 and the 100, and he's going to be sensational at SECs and NC2As. I don't know how much Brett's going to rest him for SECs, but he he swims fast in season. He'll swim fast at SECs. He's done it every year. Um, they've got a great back, a top five backstroker, and Joseph Patching. Um, so they've got the makeup to, to put some, together some really good relays. You know, Georgia's going to be good. Jack Barley, somehow or another, has quietly put together a really strong men's team. And, you know, Chase Kalish obviously kind of leads the way. He can swim it all. Um, but um, uh, he, they're, they're going to be good. And they, they probably end up having a little bit more depth than Auburn. Uh, but I don't think they're going to be as strong as Auburn on the relays. So... You know, those two things may balance each other out, and there'll be a good battle for second. For yeah, sure. that's Tynan Stewart, Tynan Stewart, by the way, is, you know, a top five backstroker, and he'll be good. Yeah, that's why I was thinking that Auburn's sprinting and Georgia's middle distance strength, yeah. I mean, they kind of balance each other out. But yeah. you're right, the relays do help, and that, you know, that is kind of the, um, the good and bad thing about college swimming is it's, you know, meets are won and lost by relays. Um, talk about Georgia's real quick. As you said, Chase Kalish. You know, I'm, I, I just tend to always think just, you know, not just because he's world championship silver medalist in the foreign I am, but just that he has this foreign I am going away easily. But, yeah. you know, I think he's going to have a battle with Sebastian Russo. I don't know if you remember, but Russo was disqualified NCAAs last year in the foreign I am. So I think he's really hungry to kind of prove himself and, and say, you know, I could have been in the battle for first. I probably could have even won. So I think this is going to be a great rehearsal for what we're going to see at NCAAs between those two. Absolutely. That's the perfect word. That 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 this is going to be this dress rehearsal for both of them, um, and kind of get a feel for what they need to do to be able to take it to the next level to to um, to beat each other at the NCAA's. And you're right, it's going to be a great battle. But I I do think they're the two best 400 IMers in the country. Uh, uh, and uh, I think arguably the best 200 IMers as well. So they're going to be really tough to beat. You mentioned Marcello Cherigini. He might not be rested. I would really like to see somebody break 19 and um, before the NCAA's, and I think he's probably the only one that can do it. And I think it would set the tone for him to be able to have some confidence going into NCAA's that he knows he's he obviously he knows he could go under 19, but to be able to see that once for NCAA's, I think that'll really help him. So I think in terms of Brett Hawk making the decision on Marcello, I think it's going to be we're going to at least get you enough so you can you know, see some good times and be able to go into this next month with a lot of confidence knowing what you can do. But then, like you've said, there is that fine line of how fast, how, how rested do you need to have your swimmers be? Because a lot of them can't do those second tapers very well, as we've seen time and time again in NCAAs. But, but I, think, I think the sprinters can take the rest better than the, than, than the middle distance and distance guys. I remember resting 
three, four weeks for SECs and then another three or four weeks for NCAAs. And it was, uh, and it was, I needed more and more rest as I went along. So these, these boys are so big now, Jeff, they're huge. And I think, um, I think what they do need is rest. So you're right. I don't think Chirigini is going to be as rested as, as well as some of those sprinters. And uh, although I do think he's going to be under 19, he's already been, what, he's been 19-2, I think. I, I'm not sure on that, but I think he's been 19-2 already. So, you know, to dip another couple tents is not going to take much at that level at the SEC championship. Um, a team that I really am hoping that will do well is the Tennessee men's team. Um, you know, ever since Matt Kredis took over that men's team, he's been kind of saying we want to get them on par with the women's team. They haven't looked as sharp as I kind of expected them to be. Um, mm-hmm. We got Luke Percy, the Australian who's coming in, who came in with a lot of expectations. And, you know, I hope that he's going to be one of those who gets in the top three in, in the 50 and the 100 freestyles. Do you think we're going to be uh, seeing some good, some good times out of Tennessee who haven't really put in a good rest yet this season? Absolutely. And it's not only Tennessee. You know, obviously, Matt's done a great job taking over that men's team. He did such a, an incredible job, has done such an incredible job for the women. But, you know, you've got other teams like a and They've got a couple sprinters under 20 already. Logan Mosley and, and Tierney from Mizzou. Greg Rodenbaugh will have them ready. Uh, so I think the wealth is going to be spread out from that fourth through fifth or sixth place. And, and it's going to be really hard to pick. Uh, between those teams because they all have some really good swimmers in specific events and um, Tennessee I don't think has shown all its cards yet obviously I don't think they that like you said they've really been able to excel in this dual meet format and when they get to the SECs I think he'll have them ready well it's great that we're finally on the conference season I know every swimmer is excited that we're finally here it's been a long it's been a long season for a lot of people for me it seems like it's flown by it, it, it gives me a little bit of pleasure to know that, you know, we're finally going to see these times that, like I said, a lot of these swimmers don't swim well in season to finally be able to put up something to say, okay, maybe you should be considering me for NCAAs. And I'm sure you're just as excited getting ready for um, ESPN's commentary on that. Well, you know it better than anybody too, Jeff. There's nothing like taper. This is the best time of the year. They can say, oh, my gosh, I can kind of just put my feet in the water and get out. You know, that's my that's my workout for the day. And so there's no better feeling than a taper. And uh, there's no better feeling than than the, than the ability to be able to swim fast. And uh, we both have had that experience on this level. So uh, this is a great time of the year. The next six weeks is going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It is. I remember those tapers well. It was always the first day of taper. It was just like the, the, best. the clouds opened up. The best. <laughs> well, Rowdy, before we uh, let you go here, we, we I'm just so curious to get you as part of our final five here that we do on the show. Just want to get your thoughts on this. These are five questions we ask all of our guests on the show. Um, I know sure. you. I know you loathe breaststroke with every fiber of your being, but. If you could change the order of strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? Uh, if I could change, or what if I don't want to change? Well, if you don't want to change, that's good, too. Fly back. I definitely, there's no way I'd change it. Fly back, breast free. It, it's the perfect order. I mean, I hate the IM, and I hate breaststroke, and I hate butterfly. I hate everything except freestyle. <laughs> but I, there's no way you can put butterfly anything but first. Uh, and then to be able to go back, you know, lay back on your back, and then to breast in the free, it, it's a good order. I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. Well, you've got a, you juggle a lot of balls in the air. You've got a lot of responsibilities. But if there was one career or job out there that you would like to have, what would it be? Uh, teach kids how to swim. I, I love watching a child learn, literally learn how to swim. Um, right before my eyes and and uh, so you know one day I'd love to be able to uh, open up my own swim school that would be a cool dream yeah I'm sure every kid would just be lining up around the block (laughs) to get a little bit of advice from Rowdy Gaines Um, on the flip side of that what's a career job you know you would not like to have Uh, offshore driller it'd be one have you ever seen that show that had dirty jobs yeah Oh, my gosh, there were so many on there. Just go to Dirty Jobs, and every one of those dirt I did on that show would be one that I would avoid like the plague. So, But Offshore Driller, I, a friend of mine uh, does, does that, and they're gone for like months at a time. It's a tough, tough, tough job. Yep. A lot of admiration for it, but it's one that I'd never want to have. 
Uh, going back to swimming, if you could change or add any of the rules in the swimming rule book, what would it be? Change any rules in the swim book, in the rule book. Uh, God, man, I'd, I'd have to think about that. I, uh, blah, blah. I, I, think the, I think the number one thing I would love to see is more instant replay, more, uh, more going to the video to be able to um, change the rules. I, I don't think they have enough video replay in the sport of swimming. I think I'd like to see that. Are you talking about just so if there's a dispute about a disqualification, they can just go to video? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I kind of agree with you there. Last question for you, Rowdy. Where do you like to go for vacation? Little Gasparilla Island off the west coast of Florida. My father has a little house on that island, Jeff. It's the coolest dude. You got to come visit sometime. You're invited anytime. It's an island. The only way you can get there is by boat. There's no cars. There's no roads. There's no streets. There's no stores. There's no restaurants. It's just a little island about a half mile wide and about eight miles long. And it's only about three hours from me here in Orlando. And it, it's, it's really heaven. It's a piece of heaven. And my father's lived there for about 25 years. And that's, no, no there's no place I'd rather go. Yeah, a little bit of peace and quiet, a little bit of way to get it's away great. from the... the it is. It's. I. I. I think I want to get on that. Get down okay. there right now. You're there, buddy. <laughs> next time you come, you got to come to the Grand Prix next year, and then we'll head over to the beach after. I'd love to do that, Rowdy. Thank you so much. Well, yeah. thanks so much for your preview of the SEC championships. It was a lot of fun talking with you, and uh, looking forward to seeing you at the uh, NCAA championships next month. Thank you, buddy. See you soon. Okay. All right, so we hope you enjoyed our preview of the Southeastern Conference Championships here on the Morning Swim Show. Swimmingworld.com is where you need to be for recaps of the action all week, as well as up-to-date reactions on Twitter. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.